After the conflict between Achilles and Agamemnon, a great dissatisfaction spread across the Greek lines. But the leaders of the Achaeans managed to prevent an even greater rift from dividing their warriors. Led by Hector and Paris, the Trojan army entered the battlefield. They knew that Achilles and his Myrmidons had withdrawn from the conflict. Without their best warriors, the Greek army already looked less threatening. Paris stepped forward and, waving his weapons, shouted and challenged the best Greek warriors to a duel. Suddenly, through the Greek lines and with his mighty shout, Menelaus, king of Sparta and disciple of Ares, opened the way through the Achaean warriors, saying that he accepted the challenge. Paris's courage vanished at the sight of his rival. His knees trembled in terror. He retreated close to the Trojans, taking cover behind his powerful brother. But Hector felt outraged at such cowardice. He furiously insulted his brother to arouse the pride and courage of Paris. He, ashamed, apologized for his dishonorable attitude. Then Paris said that he would duel with Menelaus, and that the winner of the dispute would have the right to keep Helen and all the stolen treasures. Greeks and Trojans made a compromise, sealed through sacrifices. It was agreed that Helen would stay with the winner of the duel. High on the Trojan walls, King Priam and his court were waiting for the duel that could change the fate of Troy. The king asked Helen of Troy, who were the great warriors he could see from up there. She pointed out and introduced to the king great warriors, such as Agamemnon, Odysseus, Ajax, and Menelaus. But she missed her twin brothers Castor and Pollux. Paris and Menelaus equipped themselves with shield and spears, ready to start the duel. The spectators held their breaths because of the tension. The silence was total. The Trojan prince hurled his spear with all his might at his opponent. But the disciple of Ares deflected the weapon with ease. Then the Spartan king made his attack. Menelaus threw the spear offered by the god of war with the intention of killing the enemy. Although Paris blocked the enemy attack with his shield, it could not contain the enemy's strong weapon, which pierced it and wounded the handsome Trojan prince. Paris dropped his shield and picked up his sword, preparing for a hand-to-hand -hand duel. Menelaus and Paris exchanged sword blows, but the difference in strength between the Spartan king and the Trojan prince was remarkable. The disciple of Ares struck a strong blow with his shield, which threw Paris to the ground. Menelaus wanted to end the life of the man who had stolen his wife. Therefore, he raised his sword and used all his strength to strike the fatal blow. But Agamemnon's bronze sword broke when it struck his rival's helmet. The king of Sparta cried out to the heavens, demanding to know what crime he had committed to be so severely punished by the gods. Grabbing his opponent's helmet, Menelaus dragged the Trojan prince along the ground. The Achaeans were already celebrating the victory of their champion when the leather buckle that fastened the helmet to Paris's head broke and the prince crawled away from his opponent. When the Spartan king was ready to kill the adulterous prince, a cloud of dust covered Paris. Through the mist, Paris was visited by the goddess Aphrodite. She, using her powers, led him away from the fight. Menelaus was furious at the disappearance of Paris, shouting for him to appear. Due to the Trojans' escape, he considered himself the winner of the duel and claimed his prize. Agamemnon, the chief of the Greek expedition, demanded that the Trojans immediately hand over Helen so that there would be peace between the two peoples. High on Olympus, the goddess Hera, wife of Zeus, was watching everything and did not want the war to end without Paris and all the Trojans being punished. Zeus questioned the reason for such fury against one of his favorite cities. The goddess Hera responded by saying that he could destroy any of her favorite cities, such as Argos, Mycenae, or Sparta, as long as he allowed Troy to be completely devastated. Zeus allowed Athena to mingle among the Trojans to spread discord. Athena, who also hated Troy, whispered in the ear of Pandarus, an excellent Trojan archer, saying that the glory of whoever defeated Menelaus would be enormous. Pandarus fired one of his arrows at the Spartan king, hitting him in the waist. The arrow fired by the naive Pandarus ended the chance for peace between the two peoples. 
the heroes of both sides ordered their warriors to attack the enemy. The war, which had lasted for more than nine years, entered its bloodiest phase. Great heroes died, and even gods shed their blood in front of the Trojan walls, to the great satisfaction of the god of war, 